Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Uh, what are we drinking today, Adam? Today we are drinking Chucky's Check Pills That Kills. <laughs> if you want the recipe, click the link over there above Justin's head. Today we're going to be talking and defending 1993's Jason Goes to Hell. I'm already laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great movie. And the reason why we're going to be defending it is because this movie purposely almost gets left out of the whole Jason mix, right? Yeah. As silly as it is, it's entertaining as hell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jason Goes to Hell is co-written and directed by Adam Marcus. And the only other thing of real note that he did in the horror community was he did the screenplay for Texas Chainsaw 3D. It stars Stephen Williams, who plays the bounty hunter in this. <laughs> does a great job. He's so funny. <laughs> yeah. He's in tons and tons of TV, uh, but probably most notable would be he plays Mr. X in the X-Files. Jason Goes to Hell starts off like any typical Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> and I think purposely so. It, it's purposely very, very cliched. So it starts off with Jason, of course, chasing down a girl. And Jason looks m the most disheveled yet that we've seen him. He looks right. like a bag of shit. <laughs> He's all rotten <laughs> yeah. and everything. It turns out this is all a big trap by the FBI to finally capture Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yeah. The big spotlights go on, Jason's all <laughs> <laughs> And then suddenly all these guys show up with guns and they start shooting, blowing the hell out of them. And it's funny when he's getting shot too with the machine guns all <laughs> <laughs> So what do they do? They blow Jason <laughs> yeah. up. Some like missile yeah. all comes <laughs> And when it's coming down, he's all, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he blows up. <laughs> so that sets the tone for the movie right off the hop, just how silly it is. You want to get rid of this guy? Fucking blow him up. <laughs> exactly. Blow him into pieces, yeah. right? Then we go to the uh, coroner's office. He's going to do the autopsy on what's left of Jason. When they open up the body bag, he's still all <laughs> steaming. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> And then for some odd reason, he decides to eat Jason's heart. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I guess he's slowly being kind of like possessed by the essence yeah. or something. Like, I think so. Like the heart is yeah, like putting him in a trance. Yeah, because like why would you just decide to eat this <laughs> guy's heart? Yeah, I don't know. know. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then he gets possessed by, I guess, the soul of Jason and all these lasers. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason isn't dead. His soul lives on and he's now possessed this guy. He's going to go on and conduct Jason's evil deeds for him. So from here we get introduced to Creighton Duke, who's a bounty hunter and he'll kill Jason for a, you know, nominal fee, yeah. I guess, right? He's asked what he thinks when he hears Jason Voorhees. Well, that makes me think of a little girl in a pink dress sticking a hot dog through a donut. <laughs> <laughs> the line makes no sense at all. He knows how to kill Jason. This is going to continue on unless uh, somebody from Jason's bloodline kills Jason or Jason's soul goes into one of his blood yeah. relatives. So the blood relatives are his half-sister, her daughter, Jessica, yeah. and then she's got like a little baby. Jessica's husband, Stephen, gets accused of one of the murders from one of the guys that's possessed from Jason. He meets Creighton Duke in jail. Duke's got information, but he's got to pay. He doesn't have any money on him, so he's got to stick his hands through the bars and gives him his fingers. He breaks each finger for a piece of information. <laughs> oh! <laughs> And he gets off on this. Yeah, he's all kind of caressing yeah. his hand, too. And... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Stephen and Creighton kind of cook up a scheme to get out of jail. And they've got to get back to the Voorhees house, where there's instruments to kill Jason. The movie kind of eventually converges onto the Voorhees house, where... They got to do battle. The biggest thing about this movie is that it's so outlandish, right? Yeah, and I think that's why a lot of people shit on it. Jason isn't in the movie much as being the physical body of Jason with the hockey mask and stuff because he spends most of the movie jumping from body to body. I don't get what the big issue with that is. It's something new. It's a breath of fresh air. <laughs> exactly. It's a different direction, yeah. right? This isn't any more silly than the last couple of sequels. <laughs> yeah, and like Jason lives, the sixth one. Yeah. He comes back to life from the grave. 
away. From a bolt of lightning. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's ridiculous. In a new blood, there's a girl with telepathy who makes things move. And yeah, and moves that, that the plant. plant with the head all in the plant. This series has already gotten so silly. I don't see what the big deal with Jason and his soul jumping from body to body is. You kind of root for Jason to come back at the end, right? Yeah, because like, you know you're you know you're going to see him again at some point. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a payoff, right? You're waiting to see Jason again. Exactly, and he when he does come back, it's like, yeah, all yeah. right, yeah. you know, now he's going to fucking wreak havoc yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. I love the way that it answers the age-old question with all these slasher flicks. Why don't you just blow him up, <laughs> you know? This is what happens when you blow a guy up. It's still continues in the tradition of some good fun kills. He still kills the three teenagers, you know, and they're, they're having sex in the tent, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. The possessed coroner kills his assistant. <laughs> yes, that's a probe. <laughs> and the coroner guy's some asshole too yeah. anyway. He's like, oh, how's it going, Jason fucking Voorhees? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like to do to you? I like to take a crap. Right on your fucking, fucking mask. mask. A big, big old, old mango style styles crap. <laughs> So, I've often wondered, what is a mango styles crap? <laughs> Just a big round ball of shit. That's Turns good. his face into a waffle, basically. <laughs> yeah, he pulls it off. Where the woman's kind of getting into her car and her head is kind of level with the top of the door. And then the guy just slams the door on her head, like kills her, just crushes her head. Well, like when he breaks the fat kid's arm and he punches him and he catches his fist and... <laughs> the woman, she gets elbowed. And her chin goes into her face. And she's almost... And that kills her? Like, yeah. it actually wouldn't kill you, but... Fantastic effects in this movie, the practical yeah, effects. Yeah, they're great effects, especially near the end, where that guy's melting. It looks fantastic. Yeah, it's great. It's, his jaw kind of gets left on the floor, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's strings of blood, and yeah. ooze, and everything. Jason's looking this. He's all fat. Like he's, he's, <laughs> he's been eating too many fucking Cheetos there or something, but his mask is kind of like used to his face. Right, that's yeah, a part of it. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you spend years underwater, you know, yeah. chained to a boulder. <laughs> <laughs> it still keeps with the ch 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 Exactly, yeah. There's some things you have to keep, and they kept that yeah. aspect of it. Well, because that's Friday the 13th, right? Yeah. That's what you associate so with So even it. though if Jason isn't in it for most of it, it still feels like a... They still keep those things and make it feel like a true Friday the 13th movie. Exactly. I kind of like how they do bring in his family tree a little bit. Because, right. yeah, there'd be more Voorhees, like, that just didn't end at his mother. I like the fact that, uh, you know, Jason finally gets his big house, right? Yeah. You know, all the big slashers have a house, right? The Myers <laughs> house. Freddy Krueger has his house. Leatherface, their family, they have a house. Yeah. Jason never had one till now. Yeah, he had that little shanty shack in, the, in <laughs> yeah. number two. The Evil Dead connection in this yeah. is, is interesting. The Necronomicon makes an appearance, and so does the like right. sacrificial yeah, knife. They're... The director went on record recently saying that Jason is a deadite. There's a few Easter eggs in this movie. It's, yeah. it's really neat how they do that, and they don't overdo anything. They just kind of have something in the corner. Yeah. or The, the just... crate from Creep Show, He's... the Sheriff Landis. Freddy Krueger's glove comes up. First time you saw that, when it first came out as a, as a kid or whatever, they got yeah. you so excited. Oh, You're yeah. Like, oh, what's it, what, the, what does this mean? Yeah. This is so cool. Everyone was talking about yeah. it too, right? And then you, everybody has their theories. And... Yeah. It's definitely made by people who are fans of the genre. So, yes, don't... Push aside, Jason Goes to Hell. Totally it's, a fun watch. Yeah, it's such a party movie. Um, may not make a lot of sense. But it I doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. It's, I don't know if it's supposed to. <laughs> yes. So if you left this one out because it doesn't have Jason Voorhees in it so much, fuck it. Yeah. Watch it. Watch it. It's great. <laughs> 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 <laughs>